Now that the new iPad Pro is available, Apple's 2018 iPad lineup is complete, consisting of four iPads. We've got the 2018 iPad Pro, the 2017 10.5-inch iPad Pro, the 2018 9.7-inch iPad, and the iPad Mini 4. With all these models, it may seem like a tough choice to make, so in this video, we'll compare basically everything from the design, the displays, performance, camera quality, and Apple Pencil performance, so let's get started. Right off the bat, I want to take the iPad Mini 4 off the list for a few reasons. It's the only current iPad that doesn't support the Apple Pencil, it's powered by a processor that came out in 2014, and it's more expensive than the iPad, so I personally wouldn't buy it. Don't just take my word for it, I ran a poll on our channel about a week ago and out of almost 10,000 people, only 3% thought that the iPad Mini 4 was the better choice. 63% of them thought that the 2018 iPad Pro was the best choice, despite being the most expensive, and I agree with them. The edges are now completely flat compared to the old chamfered and rounded edges which made it a tad bit difficult to press the buttons. The buttons on the new iPad Pro feel great, but the shape will take a bit of time to get used to since the curved design felt more natural to hold in the hand. On the back, the camera is quite a bit larger compared to the other iPads, making it look like it's packing a serious camera. And it is, which you'll see in the photo comparison in just a minute. The smart connector has been relocated and made larger on the new iPad Pro, which also features a bunch of internal magnets so it can powerfully hold onto covers and cases with more than just the smart connector in front face. Now the 9.7 inch iPad doesn't get the smart connector and will have to resort to using Bluetooth for keyboards. I personally love that the front of the new iPad Pro is black, which helps hide the chewed up sensor array that brings Face ID to the iPad for the first time ever. And the best part is that it works in any orientation, even upside down. The white front on the old iPads really made the bezels stand out, especially the huge bezels on the 9.7 inch iPad. The 10.5 inch iPad Pro had thinner bezels on the sides, in fact even thinner than the bezels on the 11 inch iPad Pro. But thankfully, the top and bottom bezels are now gone thanks to the new model ditching Touch ID, which also makes it a lot easier to use the iPad Pro while in landscape mode. This change alone makes the new iPad Pro really stand out from the crowd. To put it simply, every old iPad just looks ancient in comparison just like the iPhone X compared to the iPhone 8. Some might hate the fact that Touch ID is gone, but if you own an iPhone X or newer iPhone, you've already become used to the new gestures and it honestly makes it so much quicker and easier to navigate compared to the old iPads. And I love having the tap to wake feature on the new iPad as well. Unfortunately, the new iPad Pro is the first iPad to get rid of the headphone jack, which makes it thinner than both the iPad and old iPad Pro, but I personally don't think it's worth it. The 2018 iPad Pro is also the first iPad to ditch the old Lightning port for a USB-C port. This gives it many benefits in terms of connectivity, and it'll only get better with iOS 13 next year. But my favorite thing about the new port is that you can use your MacBook charger to charge the new iPad Pro, and I've already noticed how much more convenient it is to charge it. Even better, the 2018 iPad Pro finally comes with an 18 watt fast charger in the box, compared to the old 12 watt iPad power adapter, so it charges quite a bit faster. Apple has also redesigned the Apple Pencil with a brand new charging system. Just simply bring it close to the new iPad Pro's Apple Pencil connector and it magnetically snaps into place, automatically pairs and charges wirelessly. So there's no need to plug it into a lightning port like you had to do with the previous Apple Pencil, and because of that, only the new iPad Pro supports it. Comparing the pencils themselves, the new one is larger and has a matte finish, and it just feels better in the hand compared to the old one. It's also got a new double tap feature which allows you to instantly switch between tools. So the new and improved Apple Pencil is something you miss out on if you go with an older iPad. The 9.7 inch iPad also has considerably worse speakers than both of the iPad Pros, which have speaker grills on both the top and the bottom, giving you stereo sound. Just listen for yourself. <laughs> As you heard, there's not much of a difference between the iPad Pros, but they both sound better than the 9.7 inch iPad. Now before we get into performance differences, let's talk about the displays. 
Both of the iPad Pros have a laminated display, which increases contrast and colors and makes it seem like the display is right under the glass. With the non-laminated display, like on the 9.7 inch iPad, there's a noticeable gap between the glass and the display, which has a few downsides. First of all, parts of the display get covered up while looking at it from an angle, which is extremely distracting. Not only that, but you can visibly see the gap when using the Apple Pencil making it harder to draw if you're looking at the display from an angle. Moving on to display technology, both of the iPads support True Tone, P3 wide color gamut, and have an anti-reflective coating that makes a world of a difference in cutting reflections and glare. However, the biggest deal is the ProMotion technology that comes on these iPad Pros. It basically allows the display to dynamically adjust the refresh rate between 24 and 120 Hz, based on the content you're viewing. This makes navigation incredibly smooth and also helps save battery life by matching the lower capture rate of movies, shows, and videos. Not only that, but ProMotion helps bring Apple Pencil lag down to a record low 20 milliseconds, so drawing on an iPad Pro with ProMotion feels more natural compared to the 9.7 inch iPad. Before the camera comparison, let's talk about performance. The 9.7 inch iPad only gets 2GB of RAM compared to 4GB of RAM on the iPad Pros, which really helps with multitasking. And if you get the 1TB 2018 iPad Pro model, you get an even greater 6GB of RAM. Now let's compare processor performance with Geekbench 4. As you can see, the new iPad Pro gets triple the multi-core score of the iPad, and almost double the score of the 10.5 inch iPad Pro. These differences are pretty huge, but looking at graphics performance, there's no comparison. The new iPad Pro is over 3 times as powerful, with the 10.5 inch iPad Pro around 10,000 points behind. We then tested the iPads using the Antutu benchmark, and we saw that the 9.7 inch iPad wasn't too far off from the 10.5 inch Pro, but the 11 inch iPad Pro completely swept the floor with both of them. Finally, we tested a more realistic test by exporting a 1 minute 4K HEVC video. Here, we see that the new iPad Pro's performance shines in the real world as well, finishing over 2 times faster than the 10.5 inch Pro, and almost 3 times as fast as the 9.7 inch iPad. Now let's talk cameras. The best part about the new iPad Pro's camera is that it gets the same portrait selfie mode and an emoji features that the iPhone XS gets, but unfortunately, you can't take portraits on the rear camera like the iPhone XR can. Now let's compare some photos between these iPads. In this first photo, you can see that the new iPad Pro shows an exceptional level of detail, and it really brings out the colors of the plant compared to the other two. We see the same thing in this shot. The 11-inch iPad Pro looks extremely detailed, making the iPad look blurry in comparison. In this wide shot, the 10.5-inch iPad Pro actually looks the worst. It exposed quite dark and both of the old iPads just look dim and gloomy. The new iPad Pro is able to bring out the colors and make them look just as I saw them with my own eyes. Now moving to the front side, we see the biggest differences, since the 9.7 inch iPad features a weak 1.2 megapixel selfie camera. As you can see, the detail just isn't there. Everything is in focus because of the small sensor and wider aperture. The 10.5 inch iPad Pro gets a 7 megapixel sensor, so the background gets a little bit of blur, making the selfie look better. As you can see, the 11 inch iPad Pro gets portrait selfie mode, which along with the higher level of detail, makes this selfie look countless times better than the other iPads. Based on all those photos, it's clear that the 11 inch iPad Pro has the best camera, by far. So now that you know the differences between all these iPads, which one should you buy? Well, I'm also crossing off the 10.5 inch iPad Pro. Why? Because the new iPad Pro is the first of its kind. It's completely redesigned and features many firsts like the first rounded display, the first iPad with Face ID, the first iPad to support the new Apple Pencil, the first iPad with USB-C, and the first iPad to pack an ultra-powerful 7 nanometer chip. With that said, I wouldn't recommend anyone to buy the 10.5 inch iPad Pro over the 11 inch Pro unless you can get it used for an incredibly cheap price. I'm talking the $350 to $400 price range. Even then, I'd rather just spend the extra cash and have the best of the best, an iPad Pro that's future-proof for years. It also doesn't make sense to buy the old Apple Pencil, knowing that the future iPad Pros will likely use the new Apple Pencil anyway. Now what if you don't need the best of the best? What if you just want an iPad for casual use to occasionally play a game or do some sketches with the Apple Pencil? Or what if you're not even interested in the Apple Pencil? Then definitely buy the budget 9.7 inch iPad instead. Sure, the new iPad Pro will do everything better, but if you're not going to be using it often, or you don't need the extra performance, better display, and Apple Pencil improvements, then it doesn't make sense to spend $800 plus dollars on the new iPad Pro. And if you're not in a hurry, I would recommend waiting 4 months until March. That's when Apple usually refreshes their budget 9.7 inch iPad, and there's a chance they'll redesign it to match the look of the new iPad Pro. 
There's no guarantee it'll get Face ID or support for the new Apple Pencil, but it's definitely gonna be improved, so wait a few months if you're not in a hurry. Now, if you're still not sure which one to buy, feel free to comment below and we'll help you make a decision based on your needs. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on more videos like this one. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media and we'll see you in the next video.